chapter 14. Aves, Allison called from their apartment entryway, frantically brushing lint from her black knee-length skirt. Aves, it's time to go. I said hold on a second. Avery yelped from the bathroom. I'm looking for my mascara. Did you do something with it? No, I have my own makeup, thank you very much. Stomping across the worn-out gray carpet in a pair of black flats, Allison thumped her fist on the bathroom door. Just use mine. You can put it on in the car. We're running late as it is. Flashing a squinty-eyed glare at her mother as she opened the door, Avery forced her way past Allison and headed for the front door. Nice skirt, Allison commented, but aren't you forgetting something? Feeling a gust of air from their open front door across her exposed rounded belly and shoulders, Avery marched into her room and moments later walked out donning a light pink three-quarter sleeve cotton blouse. There, Avery couldn't help but laugh at herself. You happy now? I don't know, Allison laughed. Maybe you wanted to show off your pregnant self while the principal hands you your diploma. I think it would make the experience more memorable for everyone. Thanks, Mom, but no thanks. As Allison backed the gray sedan out of their parking stall, Avery pulled down the passenger visor and began dragging the mascara brush through her already jet black lashes. Aves. Allison began, making a right onto 13th East. This will probably sound corny because I'm your old mother and all, but I just want to let you know how proud I am of you. Well, Avery said jokingly, I guess it is a little corny, but go on. Seriously though, a lot of kids don't ever graduate, and this last year has been especially hard on you. It's it's been hard on both of us. Avery closed the mascara bottle and placed it in Allison's purse. It could have been worse. Dad would have been proud. Yeah. Ten more minutes passed as Allison navigated through the inner city traffic. Well, you sure have gone quiet. Yeah. Avery responded, keeping her eyes on the passing buildings, pedestrians, and cars. Sorry, I've just been thinking. I mean, this is supposed to be such a big day and everything, you know? What do you mean? Allison inquired, slowing down for a red light. Does it not feel that way? Sort of, but all I can think about is... The baby? Today I graduate, but what about tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after that? Just a day at a time, Avery, that's all we can do. Remaining silent, Avery closed her eyes and leaned back in her seat. Hey, no sleeping, Allison insisted, we're almost there. Mom, chill, I'm not sleeping. Raising her hands to her eyebrows, Avery sighed forcefully, keeping her eyes closed. I'm thinking. Finishing a left-hand turn, Allison placed her right hand on her daughter's shoulder. We can do hard things, Avery. We already have. Within five minutes, Allison was slowly driving through the ocean of parked cars, looking for a spot with minimal required walking. Well, looks like this is the best we can do. Bringing their sedan to a halt, Allison pushed the transmission into park, and the two exited the vehicle. Warmth from the blacktop crawled up Avery's legs as the pair made their way to the rendezvous point they had arranged with the Harpers. There it is, Avery said, pointing off to their right. Beyond some aspen trees that adorned the campus walkways, there stood an imposing massive replica of the Western Republic's national flag. Fashioned entirely of clear glass, the eight-ton weaving spectacle was suspended in the air, hoisted by stainless steel rods, 20 centimeters in diameter, protruding from the ground at varying angles. 
There were ten rods in all, one for every province in the Republic. How late are we? Allison questioned, fumbling through her purse for her phone. Like ten minutes, Avery responded, double-checking to see if Eric had responded to her last text. I guess ten minutes isn't too bad, Allison admitted. Yikes, it's a hot one today. Well, Avery said as they arrived and stood under the enormous glass monument, they should be here pretty soon. The York University campus was a bustle of activity, with East High graduates and their families zipping this way and that. White and red tassels coupled with the platinum numbers 130 dangling from the awkward black caps. Photographs were in progress in every direction. Graduates posing in their white cap and gown with their parents, siblings, and grandparents. Taking a shady seat on one of the many concrete benches, Avery looked longingly at the students with two parents standing beside them. Images of her father flashed in and out of her mind. A few times she thought she saw his curly brown hair and cheery smile coming through the crowd. Was that him in the blue suit, carrying a dozen roses? Why don't you try calling him? Huh? Avery was startled by the voice to her left. I think you should call Eric, Allison repeated. Oh, right. Pulling up the number, Avery placed the phone to her ear and listened to it ring th through to voicemail. Hey, it's me. We're here. Please call me and let me know if you're running late or if you're already here. We're just sitting by the glass monument. Love you. I didn't know you guys were using the L word, Allison commented, raising her barely existent eyebrows. Yeah, so? Avery looked at the ground, rolling her phone around in her hands. How long has that been going on? Allison sat up for a moment, straightening out her skirt. I don't know, a couple weeks. You think you really love him? Mom, Avery glared. I really don't want to talk about this right now. Okay. Yes, Avery conceded. I think I do love him. And stop tapping your foot like that. It's driving me nuts. Sorry. I just... You know, noises right now. Little noises like that are making me crazy lately. Is that them? Allison asked. In the blue SUV? No, Avery said. They're in a white SUV. How long do they expect us to wait out here in the heat like this? Removing a wad of old receipts from her purse, Allison began flapping it across her face. I don't know, Avery sighed, standing up. They should be here by now. Well, let's at least get your picture taken out here while we're waiting. Reaching into the bag that contained Avery's white cap and gown, Allison looked up to see Avery had waddled halfway to the parking lot. Aves! Jumping to her feet, Allison began chasing after her fleeing daughter. Turning to verify her mother had caught on, Avery frantically gestured for Allison to keep coming, then hurried toward their car. Avery, what are you doing? Allison hollered, desperately trying to keep up. Wait up! Once in step with Avery, Allison tried to get a few steps in front of her and head her off. Aves, what on earth are you doing? You have a graduation to go to. Quickening her pace, Avery pressed on. He's not coming, Mom. What do you mean he's not coming? Allison panted, shifting her purse and bag to her other arm. Did he text you or something? No. That's part of the reason I know something's wrong. Plus, they're not like us, Mom. Eric and Gavin are never late for anything. Ever. Maybe they got stuck in traffic or something. Throw me the keys, Avery insisted, now standing at their driver's side door. Allison reluctantly dug around inside her purse, then tossed them over. Catching the clanking key ring, Avery nearly had the sedan in reverse before Allison could even get her door closed. Avery, slow down, Allison growled, firmly planting her hand atop the gear shift. Let's just try calling again. 
I've been trying, Mom, Avery rebutted. The last time I heard from him was at like 7 this morning. He hasn't responded to any of my messages or calls since. That could mean anything. We, we have no idea what he's up to. Driving us over to their house isn't going to accomplish anything. I'm sure they won't even be home when we get there. We're not driving to their house, Avery said, throwing the car into reverse. We're going to the hospital. And you're certain he'd be here? Allison said as they approached the front entrance of New Hope Regional. It's the closest one to their house, Avery insisted, halting her gate as the automatic glass door slid open. Stepping promptly up to the information desk, she placed her quivering hands on the desk. How may I assist you, miss? A young, bulky security guard asked. We're here to see a patient, Avery panted. Eric Harper, he's 18, and would have arrived within the last two and a half hours. Hmm, let me see, said the security guard, taking a moment. To input the information, he looked up from his computer screen. Do you happen to be in the company of Avery Renshaw? I am Avery Renshaw. He's in room 213A. It's down the second hallway left of the elevators. Thank you. Gently placing her hand on Avery's arm, Allison smiled empathetically at her daughter as they turned, their feet tapping along the gray tile floor. Rapping quietly on the door of room 213A, Avery and Allison were breathing deeply from their urgent walk from the foyer of the hospital. As the door slowly came ajar, they were met with Gavin's brilliant green eyes. Please come in. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to phone you. I recently lost all my phone's contacts, and during the madness this morning, we didn't end up bringing Eric's. Don't worry, Gavin, Avery said, stepping into the room. Cupping her hands over her mouth, she cautiously approached the bed on which Eric lay. He always said he didn't want to be intubated, Gavin said quietly, ushering Allison into the room. Maybe he'll pull out of it, though, you know? Of course, Allison whispered, gently squeezing Gavin's arm. Absolutely. Tears began making trails down Avery's cheeks as she ran her fingers delicately through Eric's thick reddish-brown hair. His face was even more pale than normal, which contrasted vividly against Avery's darkly toned skin. Eric, she whispered into his ear. You're in trouble, mister. You know that? You stood me up this morning. Setting her purse on the bed next to him, she leaned over and kissed his clammy forehead. Looking on from the opposite side of the room, Allison clutched Gavin's tan shirt sleeve, fighting back tears of her own. A rush of hope swelled in Avery's chest as Eric began to stir, coughing and gurgling into the ventilator tube that protruded from his throat. Eric arched his back and opened his eyes. Rushing to his brother's side, Gavin crouched to one knee and took him by the hand. Hey, buddy, it's me. You're in the hospital. Remember, you stopped being able to breathe very well this morning, so we had the ambulance come and haul you down here. Turning to face his brother, Eric strained his neck to be able to nod in acknowledgement of what he'd just been told. And Avery's here, buddy. She's right next to you. Leaning further to his left, Eric gazed longingly in Avery's direction. Feeling her soft, warm hand against his cheek, he closed his eyes and tried to inhale a deep breath of her perfume. He was frustrated, however, to find the ventilator was doing all the work for him. Reaching for the apparatus jutting from his throat, Eric grasped the tube and began to yank on it. Eric, Gavin interceded, prying his brother's fingers free. You have to leave that alone. It's helping you breathe. Swinging his right arm across his chest, Eric swatted at Gavin's hand and pointed his forefinger accusingly in his face. Rising slowly to his feet, Gavin wiped a tear from his clean-shaven face. I know you never wanted to be on life support or intubated, but buddy, this is just a ventilator to help just to help you until you stabilize. 
Slicing both his hands back and forth through the air, Eric had signaled for silence. Now grasping the plastic annoyance that filled his mouth, he used both hands to loosen and finally remove it entirely. If I'm going to live, he gasped between words, it's going to be without a tube down my throat. Struggling to breathe, he managed a few good breaths. He turned again to face Avery. You're wearing that am amazing perfume again. Yes, Avery said, taking his hand. Just for you. You're beautiful. You know that. Unable to speak through her tears, Avery knelt, closing her eyes, and held his weakened hand to her cheek. You need to do something for me, Avery. Eric coughed. What? Avery sobbed. I need you to say hello to little Amon for me. Who? Avery squinted through her tears. Well, don't you think it's a good name for the baby? Eric forced a smile through spurts of coughing, his chest fighting for air. Almond, Avery said, raising her eyebrows. Yes, it, it's a beautiful name. Avery, Eric continued. Yes, Eric. This isn't the end for us. You understand? Eric, don't talk like that. Avery sobbed, squeezing his hand even tighter. The best. The best is yet to come. Eric, no, Avery pleaded. Gavin, can't you make him wear the ventilator? This is what he wants, Gavin sobbed, trying to choke back tears. I need to respect his wishes. Gavin, Eric coughed. Gavin, get over here. Avery attempted to step away and make way for Gavin, but Eric held her hand tighter, keeping her close. Walking to the opposite side of the bed, Gavin placed his muscular hand on Eric's shoulder. Yes, brother. Thank you, Eric managed, for everything. For being the man I'll never have the chance to be. Then looking straight ahead, his grip on Avery's hand relaxed as he exhaled. I love you. And then silence. Timeless and sacred, it saturated the room. It hushed all tears, and even drowned out the enduring tone that blared from the heart monitor machine. Leaning slowly over Eric's chest, which no longer fought for breath, Avery placed her lips upon his forehead for the last time.